Oh man, table consequence. Another episode. Mm -hmm. Shout out to uh, Flex Fitness for housing us, uh, and uh, Yoha Helping Hands, mm -hmm. and uh, Self Preparatory Academy. Oh man, let's do it, bro. You know what it is. Um, you guys, uh, if this is your first time um, watching the podcast, I always like to uh, give a shout out to my sons on the moral behind me, um, just to keep their names in light. Um, to my right, I got my son uh, Gerald Stewart, who died in the Phil in the, um, Philadelphia area from gun violence at the age of 23. Then right next to him, I got my son Omar Vasquez, who also died in Philadelphia. Yeah. Nephew. My nephew, I'm sorry, my nephew Omar. Thank you, bro. Um, Vasquez, who died in Philadelphia from um, a car accident. And then I have my son uh, next to Omar Mokman Jenkins, who died in the uh, city of Philadelphia from gun violence at the age of 18. And then my son uh, next to him is Montrell Stewart, who also died from gun violence um, at the age of 26 in the uh, Philadelphia area. Look at that smile, though. Yeah, yeah. You know I'm saying? Yeah. Good kids, man. Yeah. You know, just got yeah. the wrong plan, you know. But I'm grateful though, you know what I mean? One thing I am is uh, grateful for, um, you know, them being here, you know, them being my sons and um, ultimately their faith because of that's my faith to believe that, you know what I mean? You know, uh, whatever the uh, decree of God is, you know what I mean? Um, although it do hurt, I'm gonna be real with you guys. And there's times that I grieve every single, maybe every single day about it. But um, for the most part, I'm grateful. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, for sure. Definitely grateful. Oh man, May Lord yeah. grant them Jenna. I mean, I mean, I mean, yeah, appreciate it, bro. Nah, man, we like to uh, we don't like to just run over that part. You know what I'm saying? Like it, even though we we talk about it every every uh episode, mm -hmm. we don't like to just skip over that part. You know what I mean? We like to be patient and uh, then move forward. Um, shout out to our guests though. We got guests today, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I yeah. call him for me. I call I want for me I call him a neighborhood hero you know what I mean <laughs> and I and I and, and a, a, one of one of the youngsters that I really truly admire man and respect mm -hmm. and um I and he may not know why I admire and respect him but I'm gonna tell him today is because um you're uh you're just courageous man you know what I mean um and you have the your own identity and I admire that you know what I mean because I know the way that you were raised. I'm talking about from the out, not so much in the inside of your home, but from the outside in the street. Mm. You know what I mean? You was really written off by name. And I'm a, uh, his name, remember this name, Kwame Mayor Trice. And uh, by name, by grade, you know what they say at fourth grade, they write you off? Mm. Third. Third. They give you the test at third. They give you the test at third. Yeah. Fourth, they know. And fourth, they know right. what direction your life going to head in. And it got to take like a real drastic change for you to, you know. Make you a know, shift. Make mm -hmm. that shift turn, you know, turn that, that, that corner. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's obvious that you made that. You know what I'm saying? So this is one of the things. This is why one of the reasons that I admire you. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we got history, man. You know what I mean? I've watched you grow. I watch your growth throughout mm -hmm. the years. You know what I'm saying? And uh, that, that, that's powerful, man. And uh, you want to uh, tell the viewers a little bit about yourself? Yeah, man. First off, I appreciate that, Bus. Um, I really do, man. Like, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I always appreciated you. You always going to you know, like be one of those, like, voices in my ear. Like, you know, as I go through life. Um, and, you know, it's just it's just so impactful i always tell you without having my pop in my life and how much you reminded me you know of not just of my pop but just that my pop you know did exist and he had you know good relationships with good people um it kind of helped me keep a standard for myself so when you say i'm courageous man like i, I feel like you played a big part in that so mm. i appreciate yeah, you i appreciate that yeah um that. but yeah my name my name kwame trice i'm from philly born and raised um I don't know if anybody know about neighborhoods in Philly, but I'm from I'm from bottom side of Somerville. Mm -hmm. um, I actually got it tatted when I was a young boy. Um, I grew up without both my parents. Uh, mm -hmm. My my pop he had a life sentence. My mom 
she uh she got she raised me all the way up to probably like seven eight years old, and she got addicted to drugs uh due to you know a uh, a C section man, uh the medical system gave her a bunch of Percocets to cope with it, oh, yeah. and that was it man. Like my mom never was the same. Um, my mom was a good mom. She was hot too, bro. Yo, I ain't gonna lie. She, she, was, out, she, was, she, was, she was a bit, she was fly, you know what I'm know, saying, growing up. <laughs> but it's so but you know what I mean? Like sometimes my mom don't even realize that. Like when I talk to my mom, she be like, when I tell her what people think of her, she be, you know, amazed because, you know, just her journey. Right. Um mm-hmm. but I love my mom. And I'm glad I got it slammed too, because, you know, I, I did have some resentment after a while. Um, you know, dealing with the embarrassment and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But but now I love my mom. Like my mom took Shahada. Oh, I'm the love. Yeah, my I mom know took Shahada. Yeah. Um yeah, my pop home. You know what I mean? I got my pop with me again. Yeah. Um well, we we're gonna get into that. All right. We definitely yeah, gonna get into that. Yeah. So the two things that for the viewers that don't um understand the terminology of took Shahada oh. is that she accepted um the religion of Islam. Right. And for the viewers don't under, that don't understand that you saying you have your father, is you saying that your father has came home, been, you he know. Beat a he, life sentence. He, yeah, he's been, he took, overturned his life sentence. Yep. And now he's home and he's and he's with you like almost every day. Uh, yep. uh, how yeah. long did he do? He did 27 years, 27 like 27 years? and a half years. Yeah. 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 Mm. That's strong, yeah. man. Me and your pop was Sully. I know. <laughs> he told me you used to wrestle. At one time, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I said, body beat your pop, man. Yeah, I don't know you look at me different. <laughs> but that's my heart. Yeah. Hey, man, I wish I had a birdie with me now. <laughs> hey, yo. <laughs> so you can defend yourself, Ain't right? Ain't no way in the world you was gonna let that shit. Yeah. Oh, no, he'd have been at me. Yeah, he'd have yeah, been man. at me. But, uh, yeah, man, it's an honor, man, just to um to have you here, man. And I'm um, just like, bro, you know, I was able to um key in on a little bit of your journey, too, as well just from a social media standpoint. And um, like I, I watched certain accolades and it was amazing to me, you know, especially when uh, you made it to see Obama, you know what I mean, during his term. And that was heavy to me and I was like, Man, and it made me look, you know, with a uh, with more of a, a, a telescope, you know what I mean, on, on your journey. And um, I'm a, I, it was amazing, you know what I mean? Um, so- it's astonishing to see, you know, b- because I know your mom and your dad Mm-hmm. And um, just to see where you was was headed, and um, the impact you was making, man, um, it was like yo, it's an eye opener because for me, I'm always the type of person that like to reflect on what's going on in the in the world that's around me, and um, I, I attribute you to be around me just from knowing your parents, and I and I'm seeing your growth. It's like yo, I want to grow. Mm-hmm. Inside of the seeing you grow, it's like yo, I want to grow because. The, the world is continuing to revolve regardless if you want to grow or not. Right. And it's a decision you have to make when you see it versus having a stubborn mindset because you got to take energy to do it. Right. And a lot of people don't have the energy to just say, damn, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something different mm-hmm. because the human body comfortable. It's easy to be in a comfort zone and years, um, you know, real life moments you know what I mean? Minutes and everything is going by by the seconds for right. real. And you look up five years, then went by, 10 years, then went by, and you in the same predicament. Mm-hmm. And it might not even be, be a jam right away, but after a while, if you ain't making no moves, you, you feel like your life is in a jam. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So um, if you could um, just elaborate a little bit, you know what I mean, about um, you know your, your, your educational years. Like, you know, going from maybe junior high, high school, college, so on and so forth. What was that like for you? You know right. what I mean? First, first off, though, you said from a, a social media standpoint, I think during the time at Obama, like, we had, like, actually met. Like, that's when I, yeah. I remember meeting you. So, like, I think you 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 brought out a lot of that. Like, when we worked out, bro, yeah. like, <laughs> that desire, that, that passion, that motivation, seriously. Mm. Um and taking that back to D.C. with me. I, I remember I was hustling to get a couple of meals mm. so so I can go back to Howard. Y'all supported yeah. that. Yeah, for sure. Like, I don't know. Like, I take that, you know, yeah. serious, and I really appreciate y'all for that. So when you say social media, like, that made me feel like, wait, no. Nah, like, 
you know, played a what big I, role in no, that. No man. doubt. But what I mean by uh, yeah. social media, it's always the current news. Right. Versus us having that conversation. So right. sometimes some things that come across as current news that I might not even been aware of because I'm so locked into who you are, period, as a person. Right. My passion is really, well, anybody that I come across, I'm passionately connected to them without really having to really be in their business. Mm-hmm. But still be giving them the uh, the proper guidance um, without judging. Right. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes, like, when I saw that, it was like, damn, my, yeah. that's good. That was what a we moment. doing, baby? That was a moment, yeah. <laughs> so I got that news from just from social media. So that's, oh, that's right, what you make the you. statement of, yeah. you know, but although we know we was, was in each other's company yeah. you know I mean, at that present moment. I just feel like I was around a lot of good people at that time. Yeah. And I always I always look back on that. So that really means something to me. So, you know what I mean? That's the only reason I wanted to really no, make no, the no. connection. But as far as, like, my education, um, I I went to the same elementary school um, all the way up to sixth grade. Um, and I got kicked out of sixth grade. But mm. um, that was during the time. Like, my mom raised me till I was about, like, seven, eight. So I was probably in, like, second, mm-hmm. third grade, right around that pivotal year where they give you the test. And um, my mom used to be like, yo, like, I'm telling you, my mom was a dope mom. She used to help me with all my homework. My yeah. projects was dope. Yeah. Like, everything was fire. Like, so I never really had that critical eye on me. Like, when I walked in school, you know, other than, you know, like, teachers sometimes hating, like, yo, your mom helped you with that. And right. it's like, yeah, whatever. But that's what parents are supposed to do. Yeah, for sure. Right. But then after that, you know, the, the, the attention seeking started to, you know, Come about because I was I was a mama's boy, right? Like I had my pop, um, and then I lost my mom. Like mm. you know, to in a sense, mm. right? Like my mom, you know, a lot, but in in the sense of her not being there every day, mm. and that was my go-to. Um, so when when that happened, um, you know, it just kind of like shook my whole world up. Mm. Um, I was I wasn't focused in school. Again, I was looking for attention, and I remember this program. I always try to tell this story about this program called the Best Team. And what the best team was, and y'all probably know him, matter of fact, uh, his name Jermaine Washington from back like uh Jermaine Washington. Hunting in Park. Yeah, it sounds familiar. He he used to play and one ball. Mm-hmm. Uh I, I don't know if you I don't know his name. Uh matter of yeah. fact his name on uh social media, Duke. Dude, 24 or something like that. Yeah, I know yeah, you're talking about, about dark skin brother. Skin brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you're talking about drive a rainbow. That's actually my guy. Range, yeah, yeah, yeah. That. Was his that wife, your mentor? Yeah, it's, dude, yeah, it's so, crazy because his wife just got me and my wife uh help us get this this new building we got. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's a small Happy world. Small world yeah. He was the president of uh, PNC Bank yeah, he, at one yeah, point. He always, yeah, yeah, he always always smiling, yeah, always guy, you know what I mean? Yo, yeah, 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 always speaking. Yeah, that's how thorough, man. thorough guy. Yeah, yeah. Yo. Yo. when you said Duke, I we yeah, clicked. Yeah, click by us, the way, yeah. Yeah. social media, but right? Social media. He was he was on the best team, right? He worked at my school, and I remember. Like, everybody in the school wanted to have a relationship with him. Because he was like, you know what I mean? Cool old head. Cool old head, yeah. And what he would do, though, he would work with, like, the problem child. Like, anybody had, like, issues mm-hmm. in class, you know, that was the only way you get the attention. Right. So, you shout know. Shout out to him, man. Shout, shout out to him. That's, that's, that's my guy. guy that, was a ma- yeah, that was a major um, yeah, plug man, you just yeah, did, yeah. man. That was major, man. Yeah. Uh, he always asked me about my family when I seen Like, you know my whole family. You know my grandma. Right. You know my sister. But. Um, again, man, like just the attention seeking behavior. I think a lot of, you know, kids go through this right. when, you know, they missing out on something in the household. Mm-hmm. And I started acting out. I got in trouble a lot. Um, and then I got on the best team. Like I got the little IEP. It wasn't really nothing crazy. Like I wasn't stupid. Right, right. It was just, yo, like, how can I get on the best team? Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Trying to figure that part out. And um, long story short, um, they started this like tracking thing where they started tracking me every 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 day almost like anything I do was like blown out of proportion, and the final straw that got me kicked out of that that first school I was at was and I no lie man an umbrella, it was a good school it's called Cook was Hick and real good school, right. but it was an umbrella that opened up next to me right we had a substitute in there. Mm-hmm. They think I'm trying to be a clown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the joint just popped open, like, randomly. Like, right. something stupid. And, like, it just, like, it just was the icing on the cake. Like, mm. go to the principal's office. Like, you know what I mean? Oh, you you got this history. You fighting every day. You doing yeah, this, yeah. you doing that. But mind you, we talking about, like, a stupid umbrella opening up. And, you know, 
from that day, they called my grandma I'm up, like, listen, you're not coming back, you know, after this year. And I thought they was playing. Like, I'm like, you can't be serious. Like, right. all this other stuff I done did, yeah, yeah, y'all yeah. worry about something stupid. And, you know, at the end of the year, I'm just hoping, like, I'm fingers crossed, hoping they don't give me that, that paper to say, you right. know, bye. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, lo and behold, they did. I had to go to Ada Lewis yeah, uh, right. during seventh grade. And I don't know, y'all know, remember what Ada Lewis was like during mm -hmm. that time, man. That was the last year Ada Lewis was open. Yeah. I remember the whole seventh grade got suspended for a whole day. Like, I've never been to a school or heard of a school that kicked their whole grade out of class. I mean, right. out of school. Like, we, I, I was suspended, I think. And I came up, and they like, yo, you ain't got school today? Right. The whole seventh grade is suspended. I'm like, what? Like, you know what I mean? Just can't right. something I could fathom. Right. Um, but I was so happy, man, once they shut it down, because I, I ain't gonna lie, I really value my education. Like, I, I was one of those guys that, that realized the difference, like from being at a good school, Cook was Higgins, yeah. and then going over to Ada yeah, Lewis yeah. and wasting time every day. Like, yeah. I'm talking about the teachers really throw you a big giant book and be like, you know, copy the terms out the book. Yeah. Wasting your time, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I went back to the Roxborough area um, that's where I, I graduated eighth grade and my sister, I remember my sister came to my, my eighth grade graduation and she was crying. I'm like, Claudia, what you crying for? She like, yo, I didn't think you'll graduate from eighth grade. I'm like, what? Wow. I was like, that's an insult. Yeah. Like, you know what <laughs> right. I'm saying? Like, I don't know, like, you know what I give off, but you know, I always had myself down for, you know, being able to accomplish things. Right. And, you know, sometimes you know, like you like you mentioned, like you do hit a lot of like rocks and bumps in the road mm -hmm. and you gotta, you know, re you gotta figure it out again. But, you know, I never counted myself out, uh, especially not at that age. Like that's just right. That's crazy. Right. But it said it meant something because my sister, like, she knew me. Like we lived in the same house. For sure. Like we, we lived in a, a two bedroom apart I mean a two bedroom house. Mm -hmm. I own the house now, but it's so small now. Like, I'll be like, wow, like this joint really was right, small. Right. right. Yeah. My sister room, we got rid of it. We turned it into just the bathroom. Like right. it's the whole bathroom now. But it was a closet. Yeah. And my room was like right yeah. next to her. She was sleeping in the cl our closet, basically. Mm -hmm. And me and my, my younger brother was on bump beds. Um, my grandma slept on the floor, like in our room. Like, you know what I'm saying? Your grandma yeah. all that, man. On our floor. Yeah. Like she she took custody of us um uh, when my mom lost custody. And um shout out to my grandma no. Shout man. out to your grandma. She all yeah, that. I had to stop, man. Yeah, you always she, remind me, man. Yeah, yeah she all that. My man. grandma was definitely a real one, a rock. Yeah, like yeah. she was I there. love your grandma. Mom and dad's side. Mom. Mom's yeah. side, yeah. yeah. Mom's side. That's all that. Yeah. My grandma, man. Like she Soldier. Yo, she slept on the floor. She loves y'all, man. Every single night. Yeah. Yeah. And always had food. Like, we was cool, but in the sense of, like, just knowing struggle, like, that was, like, we felt the struggle. You know what I'm saying? In that sense. Yeah. Um, My my aunt lived with us, too, at the time. Her sister. Yeah. So she had the other bedroom. Um, And they, they both owned the house, so, you know, they had to kind of split it. But, you know, they was cool with my grandma, you know, uh, keeping us there, but like I said, we was basically in a one and a half bedroom, three, four of us. Um, so yeah, not to just focus on that point, but it was just, you know, a constant reminder, like, you know, yeah. being in an urban environment when you on top of each other, yeah. nobody can breathe, like you don't got no time to like just, you know what I'm Let saying? Let me ask you one question though. Did you feel loved in that, in that moment? Did you feel love? Like I felt love, yeah. But I always bring up this part. I, I felt misunderstood. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I always, I always felt misunderstood. Going back to the eighth grade graduation, like, damn, like, you think I graduate? But just the idea of like, like, yeah, I can love you, but do I really understand you? Right. And I, I learned, you know, especially when I went to college, like, you know what I mean? Like you, like only certain people gonna have a disposition. Like, you know, a male can have a, a certain disposition towards another male. Like, you get what I'm trying to say? Like, we understand why we got so much energy. Right. Right? Like, testosterone. Like, right. we're not going to be, you know, offended by that. You know, sometimes, like, we understand why we so aggressive sometimes. Right. right. Women be like, damn, you too aggressive. And right. it's like, no, like, that's just, that's yeah. just natural. Like, you right. know what I'm saying? 
For sure. Um, but I think that's uh that's something I had to learn, you know, especially growing up in the household where my grandma raised me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like she she had love for me. Right. But she ain't had a disposition towards me to like really understand me. Yeah. You know what? I I think that, you know, I think she was just just trying to make sure she get it done. Yeah. You know what I mean? In terms of roof over your head, yeah. and clothes on your back, and food on the table. Ain't no doubt. You know what I mean? Just push you, you know, through from year to year. You know what I mean? To get you to that next level. You know what I mean? And just just me knowing her, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And observing her through the years, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Y'all, she still got that little puppy. <laughs> oh, all right. That was my sister, though. Oh, that was, it was your sister, like her but dog. she used to always yeah. walk the dog, though, right? Yo, shout out to you again, bus. I meant to mention in that school that I went back to, Levering and, and Roxborough. Yeah. Why my this boy? Why this boy bus coming pushing the milk carton and all that? <laughs> right. You, I remember that now. I forgot Yo, that. I remember that. I seen, but I'm like, bus got a real job, man. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I had a real job, bro. <laughs> I used to deliver the food to the schools, yeah, man. Yeah. That was that was major, man. I remember yeah, that. I yeah. never forgot that. Yep, I remember that. But you know what I'll never forget, man? I never forget you asked me for that money that time. I, I gotta bring that up, man. <laughs> Which you you asked me for something. I think you asked me for a dollar, some change. Something. You didn't ask me for no change though. You asked me for some money. And I pulled out a pocket full of change, bro. Yeah. And I gave him the change, right? And I and I handed it to him. He smacked the change out of my hand and was like, Oh, what this? <laughs> I asked you for a dollar. I was like, "Yo, bus, we get a dollar." Bus always yeah, stopped yeah. me. He's... Bus give you a dollar, like bus one of the old heads. They give you a dollar. So it just so happened this day. I'm like, "Yo, bus, we get a dollar," and he like, "He got all this change. I ain't got no dollar. I can make a dollar." Like basically, yeah, you smacked it out of him. He like, smacked you. I said, "Bus, I ain't asking no." <laughs> <laughs> Hey, yo, that was my youngin' though. I actually had a lot of love for him, man. A lot That's of love for him. Because I seen the I seen the I seen the difference in him. Yeah, he showed me you know some I mean? mercy that day, man. Yeah, yeah. Shout out yeah. the bus. Yeah, I, I seen the difference in him. And um I remember when I heard you went to, when you went to uh well, first and foremost, I remember I heard you was hustling. And I'm like, damn. Like you had a different um like aura about you. So I'm like, damn, he hustling. He he gonna probably he gonna probably you know what I mean? Stack some paper. And sure enough, soon when I heard that, I heard they kicked your door in that fast. All within, you know, probably weeks and months. They mm-hmm. kicked your door in. Then next thing you know, I looked up. You was, it was like a year or two later, you was, you know what I mean? Getting out of uh, jail for that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, man. Um, How old was you? I was, I think I was 15 when I got locked up. Right. Yeah, I was 15. Because I was excited about my 16th birthday, man. I was about to get a car, a little stuff like that. But I was 15. Um, I think I was like 14. I started smoking weed. That's what it kind of yeah. got me. Like, I used to play ball. Everybody knew me for hooping. Um, and, you know, I think we had like a real bad like season. And I had an issue with my coach. And I just like, you know what I mean? Went mm-hmm. into like a little... Depression. Yeah, like depression. And then um I was in the hood every day. Right. Um I had already made the connections from Lewis and everybody, you know, everybody from the hood knew me. A lot of the old heads looked at me like, you know, like young boy, what you doing? Like, you know what I mean? What you what you trying to get into? And I really wasn't, you know, moved by it because I always said to myself I wouldn't sell certain type of drugs either because right. of my mom's situation. You know what I'm saying? Like I had like a like a real like conscious about that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do remember um Wayne, um, you know, rest in peace to Wayne. Uh Wayne and I was walking and we was coming back from school one day and I was like, yo, man, I'm tired of being broke. You know what I'm saying? Like something we gotta do. Like, you know, I'm ready to at least sell some weed. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He was like, man, why not? Like, we got a bunch of weed heads right right in front of us every day. Like, his cousins and everybody used to just smoke weed. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we was like, all right, like, you know, Friday, you know, I get my little, you know, couple of dollars. You get your couple of dollars, we, uh, we're going to go half on an ounce. You know what I'm saying? And I remember we broke down an ounce of weed and we ain't grandma crib. Right. And from that day forward, man, like, 
once we started seeing a couple of dollars come in, we was dead serious. Like, oh, all right. Like, this is what we on. Um, but, uh, you know, one thing leads to the, the next, right? Like, I'm I'm getting phone calls 3 in the morning from dudes that smoke weed. They drive around still hustling. I'm like, yo, what you doing out here so late? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what, like what's, what possibly could be going on? He like, yo, you what you mean what's going on? I'm still getting money. Like, it's still money on like, And I'm like, ain't nobody buying no weed at this time. Like, well, no, nah, you know, I'm selling, you know, I'm selling this. I'm like, yeah. And, you know, like I said, once I had, you know, started smoking weed, I'm like, yo, man, the money ain't adding up like it was in the beginning. Like, you know, I'm kind of cutting into my own profit. Right. And Makes sense. yeah, like, you know, one thing leads to the next. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna sell that, right. and you know I don't know if you remember signing on crib on mm-hmm. on Twenty First Street. Mm-hmm. I ain't had to do nothing. I literally went around there, bagged up my first eight ball, and uh, you know uh, it was it was from it was from there. Like it was off to the races, man. But just going back to the conscious of it, like I remember, uh, like I remember seeing my mom get served. You know what I'm saying? You seen your mom get served? I seen my mom get served, man. I got the money back from the person. Oh, all right. I got yeah. you. All right. Yeah. But it was like, it, that money ain't mean nothing. Right. I was crying. You right. know what I'm, I'm going to break the ice a little bit real quick for you. I used to, sell, I used to serve my aunt, my mom's yeah. sister. I think we I understand all, the yeah. mindset once you in it, but I don't understand it. Like, it was, like somebody else going to serve her. Yeah. That was my mindset, which was all wrong. I'm not <laughs> saying it was right. Right. But I was like, and it's crazy because it made me reflect and think about that because I remember when the first time I seen her get served, I was like, damn. You were salty. I was salty. That's my aunt. That was my aunt. I mean, like, my heart. Right. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't knee deep in it at the time, but over a time and the period of time kept going on and on, uh, I started serving her. Putting in a position to be the runner, bringing the people back to me, mm-hmm. and um, it, it's crazy because when I'm looking and thinking about your journey, um, where we at and and, and how we live, um, it'd be a, di- a direct reflection to our children. Um, it's just it could be that one relationship that get them to make the wrong decision, mm-hmm. even when you was in whatever grade and you felt like you know. When your sister said, yo, you're going to be graduating out the sixth grade, and you felt a little bit. When you was in school at that moment, for me, when I was in the third grade, I got left back because I was dealing with the guys in school who didn't care about school neither. Mm-hmm. So we always was fighting, you know what I'm saying, always getting sent to the principal office. I was good in that role, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like the other role wasn't me. Because I felt like the guys who was doing good and doing right, mm-hmm. I didn't fit in with them guys. Mm-hmm. So it was just me making a wrong decision. I wasn't stupid. Right. I just was making that irrational, stupid decision mm-hmm. to hang with the wrong. I wasn't strong enough to say, no, I'm going to be a, a, be a leader. Because yeah. it's always just you. It's just me. It's just you. That's real, right? Like, you know, and the one, I remember in Ada Lewis, they had like, they did have a group of kids, like, I think it was one class that was like the focus class, right? <laughs> I got put in that class one like for a week or something. And I did everything in my power to get yeah, out of that jump. That was good. Everything in my power. Like, that was good. But but it do let you remind you, like, yo, man, you could do it. Like you I'm I'm capable. Like mm-hmm. I, I needed those reminders. Like, you know right. what I'm saying? I'm capable of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then let me let me let me let me ask you this. When you uh Talk a little bit more about you going to placement, like as a juvenile. Right. So, so as you as you mentioned, um, they they came and they ain't not they ain't kicked my door in, but they definitely uh they they banged on that John and, and came in with 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 the gats and all that pointed at everybody. Um, and this this kind of go back to like the little stupid stuff like I mentioned in sixth grade, right? Like, so. Like just being fully transparent, like my crime at the time, I got had a bench warrant. Right. So what I actually got locked up for after that was something totally different. But what they came there for was a bench warrant. Right. And the and, and 
part of it was my grandma, you know, having like trying to have my best interest. She was like, you know, I know you selling drugs. Like, she told my my uh, my PO, my advocate, yeah. and them, like, yo, like y'all gotta do something about him. Like, right, you know right. what I'm saying? Like, get him getting out, out of hand. Yeah, yeah. He getting out of hand. And they told me, um, if I ain't come back to their program, you know, pretty much they'll uh they'll subpoena me. Right. Which they did. I got the subpoena. I'm thinking like, I'm not thinking much of it because again, the case I got locked up. My first case was in high school. Right. Like in tenth grade, um, I was selling weed in school. Um, but they so the I don't even want to tell those. The the story the story is kind of stupid, like I'm 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 asking somebody to hold the weed for me, basically, because they they was coming to search me in the school because I had a phone on me back then. Phones was like banned, like mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. And it was a fight going on, but I pulled my phone out to answer my phone. The dean like, "Yo, come with me. You coming to the office?" And I know I got weed on me, phone, yeah, everything. Yeah. I'm like, "Oh, I pass it off to somebody I know," and you know, um, I pass my phone, my weed, everything. And, you know, uh, when we get down to the Dean, he trying to make me a deal. Like, listen, man, just give me the phone and I'll give it back to you at the end of the day. Usually they don't. So I'm like, yo, I'm not playing. Like, I really want my phone back, you know? Tired of getting new phones and stuff like that. But long story short, I caught, I, I told him I didn't have it. I, I needed to make a phone call to go, you know, uh, to get the guy who did have my phone to bring it down. Unfortunately, my communication skills was terrible. I said, you know, bring it down, right? He, oh my goodness, bro. <laughs> he, he brought the he brought everything down. This boy, no, he didn't even bring everything. He brought weed, man. He brought a bag of he brought like two bags of weed down, man. And I had more than two bags of weed. I was like, you serious, <laughs> man? And you got booked for that. I could have let him. I could have been like, you know. But you took that. Yeah, I took that. Yeah. I mean integrity. Right. Right. Had to. So that was my first case. And I set, you know, um, set in, you know, the little cell and came home. They put me on the, the probation uh, advocacy and all that. And um, I got burnt out. Like they, they promised to help me with a job. Yeah. The job wasn't coming through. That was the setup. Yeah. yeah. They set you up putting you on probation for that. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Two bags of marijuana. Two bags of weed. Guys. Yeah. That, but that was. We could have. Right, right. That's how like, you know no, they could have gave you a class for that. They could have gave you a class for that. But that's how they set our children up. You know what I mean? Acting like they got their best interests. Then they came to my crib over. Right. And they act like I was like a murderer. Like, yeah, because I heard. Kingpin, like the whole block. Was the whole block. Was yeah, I heard like, about it. Everybody was like, like, what do you do? Right, you know right. They made but it But they broader. did catch me. Right. At that point, they got me. like, Because, you know, I just caught. I just had a helped a half ounce of coke that right. like there. They found it. And they found it. Yeah. And I'm like, damn, like it was Friday. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Fresh weekend. So 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 yeah. fast forward, right? You you want the placement for that, right? Went the placement. How, how long was your in placement? Um 15, 15 months total. Um Did you get your diploma? I got my G D and diploma. Okay. Um I, I remember I didn't want to stay though. I had to stay longer to get it. So it was a decision. Like right. I didn't I had straight ups in tenth grade. So I was, you know, pretty much um trying to like figure out if I could graduate on time. And they was like, right. you know, it's better that you take the G D or you won't graduate. Right. And um long story short, I stayed I got advice from my pop at the time. Right. Um, I was talk. And, I was writing him letters. Oh, so you and your dad was writing back and forth. Yeah, they so, allowed us to write. Okay. Yeah, and because they usually don't let you write to right. prisons and stuff. Right. But they allowed it because he called my counselor. He right. did his due diligence, and um, I remember just talking to him about it, like, "Yo, man, I thought they was trying to play me, like, right. trying to get me to stay long because I was like doing little stuff for him. Like, I would do like the, the tours for like." Anybody right, that was right. coming in and investing money into the, the juvenile place, like they would have me do like the presentation. Yeah. yeah. So I'm like, y'all just trying to just get me to stay so y'all can use me. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, I kind of dig myself like, no, nah, like this will work for me because when I when I uh, leave, I'll be 17. Um, I won't be, you know, like I'll have a year to, you know, kind of still develop into an adult, but also 
like I can make my own moves. Like I don't got nobody, you know, pretty much over me telling me go to school every day. Right. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Right. And that was big for me because I struggled, you know, going back and so, forth to school. So when you finished when you finished there, did you uh what did you do after that? Like after you graduated? I, I went straight to uh I had like a, a job readiness program for like a month, but then I went to college. So I went to a program, it's called the Center for Male Engagement. The Center for I actually work there now as an academic administrator, but I um The Center for Male Engagement. Center for Male Engagement. Gotcha. They have a summer program that prep you for college. Okay. They prep you by, you know, connecting you to administrators throughout the whole college. So you meet like financial aid administrators, you meet counselors, you meet advisors, uh, and then they take you on like a uh a uh like a trip at the end where you, okay. you pretty much like out in the cabins, like something that you probably never had done. I never had done. Before. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a great opportunity. It was similar to the best team because the, the support coaches that worked there, the administrators, they, they like us, like, you right. know what I mean? They got tattoos, you, they black you, down the earth. You know what it sound like? Just listening to you talk. It sound like you worked it. You worked it good under structure. Like positive structure, right? You worked good under that, right? Oh, um, when you finished, uh, when you finished the Center for Mel Engagement, you picked your school. What school? What college did you pick? Went to Howard University. Howard University, and you, uh, did you graduate? I did. I graduated with my bachelor's science in education. Okay. So, what did you do after that? I became a teacher, a full time teacher in Philadelphia school district. Uh, toward fourth grade. Um, I taught pretty much every grade, K through eight. Um, and then I also taught 11th and 12th grade uh, high school. Okay. What high school you was? I was at Boys Lad. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. gotcha. I ain't stay long. You ain't stay long. <laughs> how long you been doing? How long you been a teacher? Um, for the last, what's it, 2017? Like the last, uh, seven, eight years? Seven, eight years. Seven, eight eight years. years. Seven years. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. So um, after you left Boys Latin, where'd you go? I went to community college. Uh, that's where I'm at currently. You you work at community college? Yeah, I work at community college. Oh, that's college. dope. That's dope. Yeah. That's dope. That's dope. What, what exactly is your position there? I'm an academic administrator, uh, also known as a support coach for the Center for Mel Engagement. Okay. Yeah. I got that's you. all that, man. Uh, I remember one time you was telling me you had a mentor mm -hmm. when you left, uh, when you left, uh, when you came home. And uh, you want to talk a little bit about that? And what what was that like for you? And how important it is it? Do you think it's important to have a mentor? Absolutely. Um, I think that's like the biggest uh, like role in somebody's life to grow, especially when you don't have a bunch of you know positive influences around you every day. Um, because you know, like you need somebody to like sometimes like bounce ideas off of or, you know, kind of just share life moments with and experiences so that you get feedback. And, you know, it don't always got to be, you know, uh, one or the other, like in, in the sense of like somebody, you know, like just hyping you up. But, right. you know, more so like just just somebody real that, that care about you, that you know care about right. you. For free. Yeah, for free, right. right. <laughs> and that's going, you know. Just, just give you, give you, give you that, that love and support. And man. You need that, man. Yeah, yeah. You need that. Yeah, we definitely. It's real need life. That, yeah. Yeah. I'm reflecting real quick on your journey, and you know what I, when I come up with is, uh, you know, you being a juvenile, and um, you making the connection with with school, with liking the program that my guy, you know, uh, Jermaine Washington was involved in Duke, mm -hmm. and um, after that program your life pretty much spiraled into doing all the wrong stuff from the environment. Like, um, you know, what was going on in the neighborhoods we grew up in. And the blessing was you actually getting locked up. Yep. Yeah. You yeah. actually getting locked up, getting humiliated. And, um, you know, thank God they came and got you, like you you maybe killed somebody or whatever the case may be. And um, that ultimately set you up to be where you're Saved at your now. Life. Right. Because when you That's went right. away and went into placement, and when you said for that moment, you know, I had to I had to dig myself because this can really benefit me. Mm -hmm. There was the key right there. 
it was like, you know, ding, 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 you knock on the shit. door of your mind going to a better situation. And the, and the, um, the coincidence was that program they had. Mm -hmm. It reminded you of that other program you was in with, with Jermaine Washington. You know what made me want to do it? Uh, like, literally, like what you're saying, is what made me want to do what I do now and become a teacher is I asked myself, like, what did I need growing up? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. What was it? Right. And it was that. Like, I understood it. Like, yo, that was that was the missing piece. Mm. And, you know, sometimes, like, you know, like, we overlook it. Like, we, but well, it's there. Like, sometimes it's in the street. Sometimes, like, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes yeah. it's at home. Like, you just, it depends on where you find it. Right. And you find it, right. I was like, yo, like, that's why I wanted to go to elementary grade. I want to catch you early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know right. what I'm saying? You need that, like you no, need that it. relationship with somebody that you consider like my old head, no, I get but it. got real love and no, want to see you it. do good things. I get it. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. You know what's so crazy? Um, you know when we start getting um, well, I know me and I actually talk to my you know my brother all the time, but um, it was once upon a time put on the table that um we we could possibly work in a youth study center. That's heavy. I mean, we was in a youth study center a lot. They need so for us. I remember us kicking it around. We was talking about, you know, certain staff members that we dug at the time, mm -hmm. like Brother McQueen. You know what I mean? There's another uh, brother named Postel. Um, they was our old heads. Yeah, and G-Ball. <laughs> mm -hmm. They was our old heads. And uh, we started, to, like, really talking about it, like, you know, and, and perspective of the role they played in our mm -hmm. lives. Us playing that role for other uh, younger um, uh, men that's that. going through the process now that we went through 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, we was ecstatic about it. Like, if it, if it went that way, um, how dope would it be? Right. And really the reflection of you through, you know, the highlighting point of you saying, he was just like one of the dope old heads. I wanted to be around him. Yep. Now you get to be that for other children. And that's powerful, bro. Yeah, that's powerful. That's super powerful. This, this is why I call that's him the powerful. neighborhood hero. That's powerful. You know what I mean? And it's a couple. It's a couple of them. It's a couple of them mm -hmm. that, that 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 that's that's always reaching back. You know what I mean? We are gonna have them on the show. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The, the the gentleman that's always reaching back for the the youth, and and with with real advocacy, what that really is. You know what I mean? It's and and to me, it's just being who you truly are for free. Mm -hmm. You know, and no dollar amount attached to it. Buy, but if you get paid, if you get paid for oh, it, it, so is. be mm -hmm. it. That's okay. But would you still be this person if you didn't get paid for it? For sure. You know what I mean? And that's what true advocacy is. You know what I mean? And that's who I click to. You know what I mean? People that's like that that would do it for free, even if they didn't make a dollar off of it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I definitely appreciate that. You know what I mean? Even down you always offering a tutor, my children. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's I, I appreciate that as well. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Hey man, shout out to Cuba too. You know why I said that? Because Cuba has this like literacy campaign that inspired me to do that. Okay. Yeah. Like they took their whole country, bro, and they started a literacy campaign to make sure everybody can read and write. But they ain't do it with no like fancy education and all that. They just said, yo, you know how to read and write? You teach somebody else how to read and write. Right. So that's really where it come from. Like, just the, like, yo, the like, basics. yeah, like, ain't no way, like, somebody around us, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I started following greatness with that in mind, like, right. pass the torch, like, give it to somebody else. Like, yeah. yo, let somebody else, you know, get the information. Like, mm -hmm. but it's, it's really that simple. Like, for, I think, each generation, like they should be able to connect with the older generation and they should be able to get the information. Like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like on tap. Like, come right. on, right. man. Right. You know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. One of the one of the things I always say about our people, I if these three things, if you teach our young men how to read. How to count and self defense. And when I say read, I'm speaking of from a standpoint, read out loud and as well as problem solve. Mm -hmm. You teach them those four things, how big their confidence would be. You know what I mean? That's what it was. 
You know what I mean? Their confidence would be big. Everybody confident because they can all read and write. Yeah. It makes a difference. It, yeah. it makes you feel like, you know, like in the class, when people laugh because you couldn't, you might have misspelled, mm-hmm. mispronounced the word. It took your confidence. Like, it means you never want to read again. Right. Like, some people never read again after that. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no doubt. And that's real. Like, no doubt. But the person that could read that was fluent, they was they was confident. They was the one that was in the, the um what you call those books, the yearbook, as, right. you know, projected to be the most successful. Six successful, right. Yeah. And that's yeah. just, it's just what it is. And, and I think, you know, everybody knew it, you know, but in our community, Sometimes we just don't hold the pillar up as high as we should. Education is key, man. Yeah, right. It makes sure. a difference. It's glor- what's glorified is what counts. Yeah. Education yeah. not glorified is where we come from. Right. It ain't cool. It's it ain't cool at up. first. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. At not. first. At yeah. first. We wait till we like <laughs> 40 <laughs> to go back. Yeah, when I was we in wait till we like 40 to go back. When I was, like, I was in school, <laughs> cutting class, you know yeah. what I mean, hanging around the, you know, the lunchroom, yeah. that was the cool thing to do. Uh, which is foolish, but that's what was yeah. being glorified. And um, the people that was actually going to school and all that, um, they uh, pursuing their, their dream, um, like squeaky quiet. And um, they're not really coming back to, you know, to let the record be known that this is the route to take. Because they don't have a relationship. Because they don't got the relationship with the yeah. people. Right. So it's a, it's a big, giant disconnect. And um, we taking a liking to the wrong stuff. So versus like, it ain't too many brothers like yourself that we can say, yo, I, this is who I take a liking to. Mm-hmm. And um, I could follow uh, your footsteps because if you could do it, I can do it. Fact. That's just basically what it is. If you showing me your testimony is important. That's why we, we, we so grateful to have you on the podcast because people need to hear it to believe that it's possible. Yeah. And your journey came from Similar, similar journeys. Like, oh, for for a person that never knew that you've been in juvenile placement, actually mm-hmm. got arrested. You know, what I'm saying? all F's in tenth grade. Yeah. That was mom, major that you said mom, that. Yeah. Mom, so mom, mom, mom was addicted to, addicted to drugs. drugs. Dad was Dad doing a life prison sentence mm-hmm. for murder. Mm-hmm. Like you could have made an excuse. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You could have, you could have, you could have been checked out. Because a lot of us do check out. Mm. And don't even realize it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I think I did, like you know, temporarily. Right. You know, but it was it was that positive reinforcement. Right. Getting locked up. Yeah, that was that was the key. <laughs> Your Yo. grandmother calling juvenile them people placement. on you. Yo, man, okay. come on, man. That was big. Yeah, that was the juvenile <laughs> That's it. You know, you know, we I be would... messing with my grandma about that. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> but you grandma. know how much resentment a lot of us. Right hey. now, still have towards a parent or yeah. somebody that made that hey, call on us. My first case, man. but that's real. Though. That really spins your life into shape. Yeah, her making that call yeah. because she cared enough she about. She cared you. enough to do it. Yeah, and, and and guess what? You know, know, and, and did you ever? Let me ask you this. You let me ask you this. Did you ever ask her how many times she went to go make that call and hung the phone up? Because I know that wasn't an easy call to make. Right. 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 Cause it is her decision. A lot of people don't know that. Like parents got the decision, right? And you know, it, it sometimes it sounds like the judge is making the decision. They do play a role, but the parents can say, "Nah, I got him." Like you know, and but the truth of the matter is, like you know, I needed that because, like my grandma, like you know, that's my grandma. That wasn't her job in the first place. You get what I'm saying? I gotta no, go I see it. your grandma. That wasn't man. her job in the yeah. first place. Right. Right, I like, gotta go see her. You feel me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it wasn't her sure. job. Like somebody, it was. She did her part. She she, she did her part. It's right. time to pass the baton. Somebody got help. No, no doubt. Yeah. Super. Yeah. Let me ask you something. When your pop came home, though, to get back to your dad, and um, how old were you when he came home? I think he was forty-eight. No, I'm talking. About how old were you? Oh, how old was I? I was twenty-seven. Yeah. 27, 28. And that's about the amount of time he did. Yeah, he was locked up my whole life. Whole life, yeah, that's crazy. Since I, like, he, he claimed since I was a baby. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. I ain't got no recollection of none of <laughs> right, that. Right, right. So let me ask you a question. How y'all relationship is now? Our, our John actually went through something, man. Right. Since he came home. Um, but, you know, I'm super grateful for my pop. No, no doubt. My pop, my pop, all that. Um, He helped me out a lot, man. Like, just in terms of being a man. Yeah. But, uh, 
you know, my pop, like he a baby coming back into the world in a right. sense. Right. So he adjustment. Yeah, like it's an adjustment. Um, and you know, he he kinda like got a lot on his, his hands, like trying to figure things out. Um and um, you know, me like I just wanna help. So a of lot course. of times. Like I really want to, you know, see my pop win and be the best version of himself because you know, I always dreamed of my pop coming home. home. Like yeah, I right. had, you know, I dreamed about I remember, it. You know what's deep? I remember you fighting like for, yeah. you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, you was, sure. yeah, that you really was pushing the paperwork. Yeah, like, sure. yo, yo, at yo one can you go in there and sign this for my dad? Yeah. And, yeah. At one particular time, I committed to not getting married until my pop came home. Like just yeah. as a like, some type of crazy statement. It ain't yeah, make sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But right. it was just like, I was trying to make a statement. Like, right, nah, right. like it got to happen. And I, what I meant by it was like, it had to happen soon. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? And, you know, just the energy I put behind that, you know, you know, it definitely took a toll on me. Right. Like in the sense of like, you know, giving so much of yourself. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but usually, you know, that's a parent role. And I, I've, been, I've been trying to express that to my pop. Like, listen, man. Like, you know, um, the parent, like, you develop as a parent. Like, I'm learning now with my son. Right. You develop. Like, I I had all this, like, all these ideas about my son, like, as he was coming into the world. But I realized, like, my son ain't going for certain things. He a human. Like, right. He right. really <laughs> want to be what he want to be. be. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And, you know, that, that, that taught me a lot about how to, loving how to understand him. like i'm still learning yeah, and i sure. embrace that part you feel me and i'll be trying to express that to my pop like yo That's embrace big, that like embrace the the understanding and the developing part of building the relationship mm -hmm. with with us he think because we we did a lot of the writing over the phone time like that was that was that was it right. like that was the developing part and i'm like it really wasn't right. like once you out I was here, just keeping in touch. <laughs> that's all. No, that is, once you get out there, right? It's a different ball. It's game. a whole. There's no boundaries. Right, like right. you know what I'm saying now. Like you gotta show me, like because yeah, yeah. love is really an action. It's action word. You gotta yeah. show me. Right. Like forget all that. Like you know what I mean. I know. You know. I know we men and all. Like yeah, yo, yeah. I love you, pop. Like, but listen, I ain't trying to hear it. Like you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get it. <laughs> Yeah, you know, but like same thing it. with my siblings. Like my siblings go. How many it. of y'all is it up from your dad? Yo, this bull pop over a new kid. Every year. <laughs> God, you gotta talk to him about that. <laughs> right, 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 right. You gotta right, talk right. to him. Okay. As he uh, should. I, I, All I, I know is shit. I know you got seven the, years. I know you got a little. <laughs> I know you got a sister, an older sister. Yeah. How, how your old brother doing, man? I ain't oh, seen him. And he up the my way. My little brother got. You talking about my little brother? From your mom. Yeah. Yeah. He he got a ten year son. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, ten years. I knew I knew being as though I didn't see him, that he must have been up the way because that was the last time I seen him. He caught a little. Yeah. You know what I mean, but that was years ago. Mm hmm. So he must have came home and caught a new job. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it happens. It happens. That's my man. Like yeah. he he was big too in my like reason like because I thought about it like, you know like we gotta play a a, a role for. You know, like that's the next generation in my like in my. I eye. need this information, man. Tyre, yeah. I ain't even know that. Yeah. You know that was my little youngin too. <laughs> so Tyre, man, like, but he he gotta learn. You know what I mean? Like he he gotta learn. Like, I try to help him in every way possible. Yeah, he gotta go through his. He like you said, learn. with your son, he yeah. ain't going for saving. You gotta he gotta go through his own little thing. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. the process. That's, that's what process. we talking about. Yeah. That's why we. Table of consequences. Yeah. Consequences, man. Yeah. It's consequences. Yeah, for sure. that, hey, heavy. That, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's just what it is. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Consequences, you know, you make the irrational decisions, yeah. you know, based off of, um, you know, how we feel. In some moments, it'd be like, uh, we'd be like uh, making excuses, per se. And, mm -hmm. it, and it makes us make uh, Ill illegitimized decisions. Mm -hmm. Off an excuse on the reason why, right. and and on land is what we want to land at sometimes. Right. Ultimately, be a jail, be jail or mm -hmm. the grave. So come to lay, he in jail. He can he can make a comeback. There's a lot of brothers in the grave right now. Right. Can't swing and back. And I'm around. super thankful that he ain't, <laughs> that wasn't the end. Man, yeah, that's right. big. Man. Yeah, I'm super <laughs> thankful. But I was thinking when you said table of consequences, it just gave me a whole new perspective on it. 
consequences is good and bad. bad. No, right, it's good and bad. bad. Good and bad. The good, the good with it with too. Yeah. So this we can hit you. It can be hit for ways, but ultimately, um, when the consequences come back good, we expect that's how it's supposed to went. Yep. When you make a positive decision, yep. you're like, oh, that's how it was supposed to went. Ultimately, they could have went sour too. Mm-hmm. And it's how you deal with it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, it is what it is. You know yep. what I mean? You got to accept it. You got to accept it and uh, grow, grow from it. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, don't go through it. Grow, grow through it. Grow you know through it. Yeah. Embrace it all. Embrace it all. Because it's coming no matter what. <laughs> no I, matter when, how you can't get around it. Mm-hmm. When I hear your story out here, just keep pushing. Keep no pushing. excuses. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Bottom line, keep pushing no excuses. You know what I mean? That's how I tell you, man. Hey, and so let me ask you this. Um, what you got going on right now? Hey man, I'm trying trying to make things happen. Right. Um so currently, like I said, I'm still at CCT, um, administrator, but um I got a home care agency. Mm-hmm. Um they won't let me in. Yeah, yeah, locked down right now. Yeah. <laughs> they got but they got a new MCO. <laughs> right. Inshallah. Right, right, right. right, right. right. Keep rumbling, baby. Yeah. I'm going to make keep you laugh for you. You know what I mean? Yeah, you should have been told me. It's been rubbing out. Oh, my goodness, man. Yeah. Yeah. The <laughs> last 10 days right. count. I right. 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 Know it. Down to the wire. But, uh, yeah, man. Been trying to make that happen. Right. Um, also, Go ahead. Uh, I got a nonprofit. Uh, following greatness, following greatness, incorporated. Mm-hmm. Uh, I got some of that material, my mentorship. <laughs> right, you already know. Uh, but you know, I'm looking to partner up because it's right. a lot of mentorship, uh, mentorship groups going on in, in in the city. Right, and you know, I just I just want to come in and fill the voids wherever I can. You know, play a part. Where um, where, where can they find you at if they do want to like if when they watch the podcast, somebody want to tap in, somebody might be yeah. somebody might be. Uh, that that young kid out there might be going through the same story, mm-hmm. and might want to tap in. Like, damn, yeah. can you tell me how to get through this? Where yeah. can they find you at? Definitely go to my my Instagram mm-hmm. um, at following underscore greatness. Um, and you know, if you if you really desire to like be in college or anything like that, or even get your high school diploma GED, uh, you can come uh to community college main campus, seventeenth. Uh, uh, in Spring Garden, right. Uh, I'll walk you through the whole process. That's um, at following at yeah. following underscore greatness. Yeah. At, yeah. Don't forget the underscore in the middle. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. I should have um, got rid of that. Yeah. But so finishing up though, the college thing, uh, coming down to Community College Seventeen uh, Spring Garden. Mm-hmm. When they walk in, they say your name, yeah. obviously, and um. Let them, yeah. Let them know. Oh yeah, say say you hear. Uh, you can you can say the center for mental engagement, or you can say Kwamir Trice. Mm-hmm. Um, they'll know me. I mean, I, I got good relationships with the security guards. Um, and one of the things you need to know if you in the city of Philadelphia, if your zip code is in the city of Philadelphia, they offer free college to mm. everybody. Wow. So it don't even matter. Uh, they got free. They got a a scholarship called the Cato Scholarship, and uh, that's. That's big. Um, no, they that didn't was have big that, that you when mentioned was, that. Right. When I was in college, they didn't have a scholarship for you, like, automatically. As soon as right. you walk through the door, you you from Philly, here's some extra money. Right. Um, whatever financial aid don't cover, we got, got you. you. That, and we're going to give you 250 a month uh, just for being in college and doing what you're supposed to do. But when you join, and if, you know, of course, you got to identify as a male, a male of color. Mm. Um, if you join my program, we also throw in $100 a month incentive yeah. uh, just for you to you know continue to stay on the right path and also you know make sure that you come to our programs so we do things to make sure that you know we're covering all all the bases all whatever hot. you need time management skills study skills um uh, we also put together real talks where you know a group of men get together and they just they kick they kick it like you know kind of sort of yeah how, how the podcast is where you can really talk uh, sometimes you just need that that, yeah. that opportunity to talk about real Definitely. stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, that's no, that's powerful. powerful. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, pre- pre- appreciate you stopping through, man. Hey, you know what I mean? Thank you for was, having me. And you was on cue. Mm-hmm. I'm mean? like, I'm like, yo, I need you. Let me come through. You like, what? Yeah. Say, yeah, let me, I mean, let me put you in the jar. 
know, I got you. So I can, yeah. I can't wait, man. Yeah. I always admire y'all. Like, yeah, I'm inspired. Yeah, I always yeah. tell y'all I'm inspired by you. Real right. I already know. I tell y'all that from. Yeah, for sure, I mean man. It. So, sure, you man. know, sometimes, like, opportunities like this give me a chance to really show it. Right. And, you know, like I just said, love is action. I love y'all, man. Love you, too. Love you, love you here too. Because yeah, I love y'all. Like and I ain't want to take it for granted. Like, right. I ain't want to be like, oh, he gave me an opportunity. Oh, maybe. No, yeah, right. I'm coming. Yeah, yeah. Right. I'll be you through next right. month. Like, no, I'm coming. And, 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 and you was on time. Yeah. And I was, on, I was early. Yeah. You was early. Yeah, early. yeah, you was early. Yeah. You was early, right? Right, right. Right. right, right. You was early. I looked up. It was like it was like 49. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. You was 11 minutes early. That's all that, man. I appreciate that. Yeah.